Frank Edelman. Uh, you've obviously had a great career as a uh, coach and as a wrestler. And uh, who are the individuals or one individual that had the greatest influence on you in your career? Uh, probably my coaches. When I was at El Camino, uh, Dave Hanksteller, who was a, mm -hmm. uh, sort of an idol in the sports, uh, was a real influence on me, uh, as well as my college coach at Long Beach University, uh, Dr. Warren Borning. So they had they were both different personalities, but yet uh, they taught me a lot of values and, and it, in fact, gave me a sort of a foundation to build my philosophy of coaching mm -hmm. on that went beyond just the technique and the training and the winning and the losing and all that kind of yeah, thing. You bet. So those are probably the two that come to mind right away that were real strong influences on me. As you were competing, did you have a wrestling idol that you looked up to? Uh, you know, I don't think I really did. Of course, How about know, as a coach? When I was wrestling, I was back in the mm -hmm. early 50s, so uh, there, there really wasn't at that time. Probably probably just more schools like Oklahoma State, things mm -hmm. like that at the time. I think, well, maybe someday I'll go to Oklahoma State or something when I was a freshman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about as a coach? Were there uh, coaches that you emulated? Uh, my previous coaches, the ones I mm -hmm. just mentioned, uh, definitely because they were such good role models, I think. And, and I've always sort of emphasized the more than the winning and the losing. You right. know, I'm, I'm more interested in the kids going on, being successful, and hoping that I maybe played a positive role in that. But mm -hmm. uh, probably, um, you know, Dan Gable de definitely was when I watched him at the NCAA championships when he lost his one and only match. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we were back in New York at the time. and. He lost that, and it was about 10 years later I talked to him about that loss, you know, having won every match and been already a three-time national champion and to end up second his senior year. And he said it was probably the greatest learning experience he had. And, of course, he went on and not only became an Olympic champion and was unscored upon in the, in the championship, even though he had an injury in knee, and went on and won several national titles. So mm. sometimes losing is really the, uh, a good experience. If you, yeah. if, you, if you use it as a strength. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What got you started in wrestling? You know, uh, it's a funny story. Uh, I was very small. Uh, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not big now. But when I, uh, when I started as a freshman at Redondo High School, I probably weighed about 80 pounds. I was probably about 4 foot 7. And I went out for basketball, uh, D basketball. And I was almost sure I made the team until the coach came up to me and said, we don't jump on people, we don't push them, we don't throw them, why don't you go downstairs and try wrestling? And I said, well, okay. So I went down there and that was the beginning. And I fell in love with it. What aspect of your character or personality caused you to be, you know, obviously very successful winning a community college state championship, I know as a coach. What were those personality traits that drove you? Um, probably uh, and I'll probably mention it again tonight. I, um, I had some rules and principles that I tried to develop, and I tried to um, make sure the kids had fun. I uh, tried to make sure that I treated them all equal. I didn't play fair, you know. It, regardless of their skills, uh, I knew that they. I wanted to teach them that that the whole idea of wrestling was to learn to compete, accept losses, but yet to come back. And keep going. In other words, you don't you don't really lose until you just give up. And so as long as you keep plugging away and trying to do your best, uh, that was really the what I built my programs on. And mm -hmm. I think maybe that influenced the kids to work harder. And I, I worked a lot on um, preparation and motivation were my biggest mm -hmm. marks that I always worked on. You've got to prepare. And I got that from John Wooden when I asked him about his pyramid to success one time I said well what's the most important part and he says preparation always mm -hmm. you've got to be prepared and you look at any sport I look at Tiger Woods for example he prepares and he beats great people because he's got that mental attitude yet he loses mm -hmm. he lost last weekend and he'll go back and he'll prepare again and he'll come back and he'll win and so really he's a winner all the time but yet he has a lot of losses right. <laughs> same thing so yeah, that's what I point. look at yeah now, is there one outstanding moment that you can think of in the sport, either as a competitor or as a coach? I mean, to me personally, as a mm -hmm. yeah, as a competitor, or you personally as a coach? Uh, as a competitor, probably the highlight.
for me was it might have been an accident in the 60 Olympic trials uh, I had to wrestle. Back then they had to qualify from different sections of the United States to the finals and uh, they qualified the top three from each one. And I qualified, but I, and my one match that I had to win was against Ben Northrup, who eventually went on and made the team. I uh, had to go back and re-qualify, but he was the big gun. Mm -hmm. And uh, even my ex-coach was uh, there for it, and he said, you know, this is going to be tough. And I said, well, I, I'll give it my best shot. And went out there, and he double-armed me and was going to throw me. And so when he threw me, I just I resisted and then I just went with it and went on through, turned him and pinned him and so I pinned him in the first period. And the interesting thing was that his whole team came out and picked me up and carried me around the arena <laughs> because they said he's so cocky that this is really thing. and it probably helped him say because he yeah. went back and, and did well and made the team that yeah. year. Thing. So that was sort of the highlight as a competitor probably in my career and as that. What made you get into coaching, Frank? Uh, probably again the influence of my uh, coaches and probably uh, the one key thing that I can remember distinctly uh, when I was at El Camino College. I actually went there in, in uh, 55 and then I uh, dropped out in 55. I was a surfer back then. We lived down in South Bay and uh, I grew up with who became legends, Dewey Weber, Greg Knoll, uh, Velzi, people like this. And so we all decided to go to Hawaii. So I told the coach, I said, I'm dropping out of school. We're going to Hawaii for the winter surf. And I did that. And then I came back in 57, and, we, uh, and I started wrestling again. And a whole pile of guys wanted to get together, and we were going to go to uh, Saudi Arabia and work in the oil fields. And back then, I forget how much money it was. Let's say you could get $10,000. Yeah. Uh, but they'd pay your room and board and everything, so the money was put into an account. Yeah. And, I just had, and I was really going to go. And uh, I was in the quad there, the El Camino, and... I uh, talked to the coach. He happened to come out, and I just happened to mention to him. I said, you know, this is what I'm thinking about doing. And he says, well, why don't you want to stay in school? I said, well, I really don't have any direction on what I want to do. And he said, did you ever think about being a coach and a teacher? And that was the first time anyone ever even thought I maybe had the ability to do that because I was sort of a maverick-type kid. And I said, well, you know, I'll give it. That's a good thing. And that just changed me right there. And I started focusing on my education and transferred to Long Beach State, and the rest was history. And How about that? Just the influence of two coaches hmm. uh, all the way along. And, and it, was, it was good. So that was probably a, a real turning point that I can remember. Okay. Yeah. If you had to do it over again, would you do anything different as a coach? I mean, you've been out of it for a little bit now, so I'm sure you've reflected uh, on that. I, I, I suppose I would. It would, uh, and, and it's probably just the generation change. Uh, when I, uh, in fact, when I did retire from coaching, I asked Coach Hank Stiller, who was who had just retired. I said, "How do you know when you want to re How did you know when you wanted to retire?" He said, "You had such a great career." Why didn't you just keep going? Because he retired when he was 57. And uh, I said, how, how do I know? And he says, when you start making excuses for why you don't want to go into that wrestling room or you don't want to go, he says, that's when it's time to get out. And that happened really when the kids sort of changed. The kids I had had, um, they'd do anything I told them to do. Literally anything to tell. I mean, I think I had. Yeah, I used to use it as a joke. I well, had, would get kids. I said, some of these kids, I could tell them to get, stand on their head in the corner, and if I'd forget to come back, I was almost sure they'd still be there the next mm. day. But then I got to where these kids, sometimes I'd make them run the bleachers, and I'd see a kid stop, and I'd say, you know, get up, get going, and they'd go, no, I'm too tired. And I'd never been faced with that total uh, failure to where they just said, no, I'm not going to do it. And I said, well, then go in and check out your gear. And they'd go in and check out their gear and quit. Mm -hmm. And that happened a few times, and, and I, that's, that did it. I knew I was going to get out, and that's when I started looking for the changeover, trying to get someone else to come in. And had, mm -hmm. In fact, Frank Gonzalez, who you just interviewed, had him come in and take the team uh, after he was at El Dorado, and he did a great job for us. So, and, it, and the program's one, now one of the top two in the state. And so Absolutely. we have great, great people there working yeah, with him. So I keep my eye on the program. <laughs> I talk to them all the time. I always say, mm -hmm. you know, have any problems here, let me know, and I'll jump in and go to the city or go to, go to the big wheels you got to save the program if they try to nail it. <laughs> yeah, sure, that's greatly appreciated, yeah, too. Yeah. Frank, what would you like people to remember about you? Um, that I, you know, particularly in the coaching world and, and the kids, that I tried to help kids be successful in life. That's, and, and to me, wrestling was just a... 
a, a small training ground, which is a very important one because they're just in community college, they're just coming out of high school, uh, say 18, 17 years old. They don't have a lot of direction. They're not sure if they want to go on to a four-year school, if they want to keep wrestling. And uh, I wanted them to be successful. So I wanted to make sure that everything I taught were things that they could look back on and, and, and use when they had, which we all do, uh, challenges, ups and downs and things that they'll revert back and remember how all the hard work they did and how they just keep persisting and keep working and, and you'll succeed, succeed. Because I don't think you have to necessarily win in the sport, you just have to not quit in the sport. And that's Absolutely. the key. Yeah, just you don't, don't quit. quit. That's a win. <laughs> that's what it's about. That's mm -hmm. what it's about. So you're taking away my whole speech for tonight. <laughs> And I got to do it in five minutes or Coach Lynn Dyke's going to kill me. <laughs> yeah, and he's tough. <laughs> I know. He's scaring me. I had to re I said, I don't know if I can do this in five minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's all. That was it, yeah. Well, Frank Edelman, congratulations uh, for being inducted in the California Wrestling Hall of Fame. Uh, much deserved. And uh, once again, thank you for your time for the interview. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's a great honor.